Hey, Mark, we've been at this now for 18 months, and we like the practical part of the practical still. After all this time, is it still possible to get a good bottle at a low price point? That's a great question, Dan. Hey, this is Mark with The Practical Still back in the world headquarters here, aka Dan's Garage with Dan Cavallari. I'm here. And it is interesting (laughs) because this has been a weird, uh, I'm 53 years old. This has been the weirdest 18 months I've ever seen in my life. You were 26 when we started this. I felt 26 (laughs) when we started this, but we started it under that premise of there's good bottles on the shelf. We don't have to chase. If you want to chase them, great, but you don't have to chase unicorn bottles. Everything doesn't have to be pappy. You don't have to spend a hundred bucks to get a good bottle of whiskey. You just got to know what you're looking for. It's crazy if things have gotten over and above what they were before. Is that is that still true? Can we still go get those? I mean, we were just talking earlier what a bottle of Stag Junior is bringing four, five, six times retail. That's crazy. Crazy to me. And that's, a, that's endemic, uh, you know, of the market. Is it still the case that we can walk in and get good whiskey? I think it is. I, yeah, I think it is too. I think it's changed a little bit because some of those bottles that were practical before are slightly less practical now. Yes. <laughs> yes. The mix is different. Yeah. 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 So the names in the, the bottles are different, but the, the, the deals are still there, Yeah, uh, which is good because, oh my gosh, things have gotten out of control. <laughs> they have. They've gotten quite out of control. Um, and I don't, you know, everybody can do what they want to do. But I just, I watch these discussions happen about things like Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel, mm-hmm. which is a, you know, a $50 bottle that really shouldn't be a $50 bottle. And people are paying 60 and 70 and 80 for it. I still just see it on a shelf for 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't understand the fury and the the craziness. Yeah. I, I mean, well, for, well, before. Oh, you, yeah. yeah hey. What about that? We got a drink. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. That sounded just like a bottle of George Dickel 15-year-old single barrel. Oh my gosh, what a coincidence <laughs> that you would know that. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm looking right at it. Do you want to try some? Uh, I this, do. So this is my... Um, Which one's this? This is, is the Molly's Molly uh, Spirits, Molly Spirits uh, barrel pick. Oh, this is a proofy one. I haven't had one this proofy yet, so 104.6. Yeah, it's... It, well, I'll let you taste it, but it's, uh, you know, it's about as good as you would expect from a 15-year-old Dickel product. It's really good. Um and that's a good thing to talk about too. Cause I, uh, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, that'd be expensive, mm-hmm. but age statements disappeared. Now they're kind of coming back. Yeah. Uh, we're used to a lot of non age stated Dickel products. Uh, we're used to other companies like barrel bourbon having mm-hmm. 15, 14, 15, 16 year old Dickel. Yeah. Now they just did it themselves. Right. And, and the, I've had two of these now, two different bottles. Yeah. They're just delicious. Yeah. No, this is fantastic. I just opened this last night. But I will say this. Um, you know, I did have somebody text me the other night and say, hey, this Dickel eight-year bourbon is on the shelf for 30 bucks. Good deal. Should I get it? And I was like, yeah, that's a great bottle for 30 bucks. You mm-hmm. know. So, you know, back to the point of like, you know, there's still great bottles out there, but they've sort of changed. And this Dickel eight-year, I mean, that's that's a fairly new bottle for our market anyway. Yeah. No, it's a new bottle in general. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's, it's the first time they've said bourbon. Yeah. But I wonder too, I mean, the more we talk about, Hey, this is a great bottle and, you know, and you know, all the other bourbon heads on stupid podcasts like ours is you know going, yeah, it's Dickel 8, you know, Dickel 8, Dickel 8. And then all of a sudden does it become, you know, this unicorn bottle? You know, what's going to save us on that? What's that? The proof. Oh, good point. Yeah. Yeah. The whiskey heads, the, all us tater folks are going to want a hundred plus proof. Yeah. And at 90 and, and to be fair, it could use a few more proof points. Sure. I think the age helps, mm-hmm. but uh, I've long thought that, uh, and that's, they call that a bourbon just because the master distiller felt like it had more bourbon characteristics than Tennessee whiskey characteristics. Yeah. But it still went through the Lincoln County process. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that process where the new make spirit is pushed through in Dickel's case, I think it's 13 feet of maple charcoal, 10 or 12 or 13 feet of maple charcoal. Then it goes in the barrel. Yeah. I think that process takes away a lot of those well, the esters and yeah, yeah. those compounds that give whiskey that mouthfeel that mm-hmm. we like. Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes a fair amount of proof to bring mouthfeel back to yeah. that. And yeah. so at 90 is on the edge. I, I really feel like it takes, you know, 94, 95 yeah. 
to get that back. But I do like that bourbon. I do too. And I will say this in, in terms of all of Dickel's products, this really stands on its own, you know, as it's unique, as a mm-hmm. unique flavor. So to me for 32 bucks or whatever it costs, 30 bucks, eight years, it's 90 proof. So yeah, a little lower proof than I'm used to, but honestly, I think it's, I think it's a great bottle. And yeah. I don't remember what the Dickel 12, not 12 year, just the Dickel yeah, number 12. Right. I think it's 92 or 94 proof. Yeah. But that's a twenty one or two dollar bottle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's significantly younger. There's no way that's eight years old. I right, remember. right. Yeah, I mean, I, so you know, going back to our original point, I just think that things have sort of cycled. Yeah. Essentially, you know, a lot of the things that have gotten hot in the past few years have gotten really hot, and now they're they're unattainable for most people. Yeah. But there's a whole crop of other stuff coming out. Yeah, and it started before, but I think the poster child for that was the McKenna ten year bottle and bond. Right. Um, you know, it it seemed like overnight we went from, it's a $35 bottle to it's 50 on the shelf Mm -hmm. to you can't find them on the shelf and they're bringing a hundred bucks in the secondary. Right. It's just crazy. Well, so you might, you might, uh, laugh at me for this, but I went to my local shop, I don't know, like a month ago, he probably, I don't know, eight, nine bottles of McKenna on the shelf. And I, you know, it was, it was priced around 50 bucks. I just said, you know what? I'm not, I don't want it. I don't want it. And it was gone by the end of that day. All of them were mm-hmm. gone. But, you know, I think that was the first time that I've sort of passed on one of those types of bottles where they, yeah. they've gotten so hard to get. But it's funny. We had a um, a comment on a YouTube video a couple weeks ago, and his comment was, I want you to tell me what other whiskeys go along with this one. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll say, well, um, I think this is pricey because I can get X, Y, and Z. But sure. his his point was something like that McKenna 10-year-old. Tell me what else is out there in that range. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a valid point. It's worth thinking about. So, you know, 10-year-old bourbon, there's a Russell's 10, which mm-hmm. can, I mean, I, we, the store in town, Hazel's, always on sale yeah. for 29 bucks, bucks, 27 bucks, something yeah. like that. Um, there's a bunch of those. Eagle Rare, if you yeah. can still find an Eagle Rare bottle once in a while for 30, mm-hmm. that's a 10-year-old age-dated product. Yeah. I've actually, so that's an interesting test case is the Eagle rare. So that shot up in price significantly. I would say like probably it hit its peak late last year and I was seeing it on the shelf for 70, $80. And now I'm seeing it back on the shelf in the $39 range, which yeah. is still high, but it's not compared to what we used to pay for it. But it's sort of come back down. I mean, I wonder why that is. I don't know. Yeah. I've seen that. I didn't see it quite that high, but I certainly saw it in the 50, $60 range. Yeah. And I just, I, I can pass for two reasons. Uh, one, there's others to drink mm-hmm. that are, in my opinion, just as tasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, I've got six or eight of them stuffed in a shelf at the house <laughs> <What else? Yeah. laughs> that I paid $25 yeah, for. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's a little easier for me, but I don't know. I think I, I honestly, I think a couple things happen within the industry. One is I think the industry overshot pricing. I totally. think they got very aggressive and you can, you can come back to Buffalo trace and they get a lot of grief about quantity mm-hmm. available, mm-hmm. but at least they haven't at their level gone. their products are getting price gouged, but that's not them doing that. Right. Right. Um, so I think they overshot on the price a lot. The other thing was, I think they, I think they held a lot of older stock for fear they'd run out of it. Right. And now they've gone, well, we're not going to run out of it. Out. We, we <laughs> ramp production up. Yeah. Uh, we're now, we're now making way more whiskeys yeah. going in the barrels than we could possibly sell even in today's craziness. Yeah. And I, so I think brands like Dickel, uh, that brought out this, this 15, they've redone the hand select their nine year old. It's mm-hmm. got the new label and all that, plenty of that stuff out there. Uh, beams done the same thing. There's, they went back to nine year, H statements right. on Knob Creek. They've got a 12 and a 15. I don't know if the 12 and 15 will be always releases, but right. clearly they've got a pile of old whiskey sitting yeah. there. Yeah. So I think that, I think they've overshot a few things mm-hmm. and, and they're going to have to let everybody catch up a little bit. And it's hyper focused. It seems like everything's expensive, but the wild turkey products haven't gone up and yeah. crazy in price. There's some great whiskeys that haven't done that. Mm-hmm. The, the whiskey geeking public is hyper focused on, uh, Buffalo trace produced whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's causing, you know, a right. lot of that stuff to f- just yeah. drastically go up in yeah. price. You know, it's been remarkably consistent is Stranahan's, you know, it's everywhere you go, yeah. wherever you see it. Tasty. It's always, oh, it's always good. And it's you got to like single price. malt, but it's tasty. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'll yeah. tell you one of my surprise, surprise, surprise bottles. Cause I'd had most of the Stranahan's line, not a lot. Yeah. Uh, but then 
I won in a little charity thing, a single barrel. Yeah. From a, st- I forget what, what store. That was, was good. That. You shared that. With Holy me. smoke. That was, was that really good? good? Yeah. That was delicious. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if it's any older than the typical yellow label strand. Right. That's only, I think three to four years old, five yeah. years old. Right. But man, it is just delicious. Yeah. It was either barrel selection or that little bit of extra. Actually, it's quite a bit of extra proof. Yeah. But holy smoke, is that good? It, it was, and you know, I'm I I like Stranahan's quite a bit, and I've the the sherry cask one. I just it bowls me over. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was you know for me that was that was it was heartening through all of this to see Stranahan's prices remain the same and they're growing in popularity. I mean, sure. across the country. I mean, I see I see them in every store now. And they're releasing new product too. They are, yeah, and um, and I think that's that's heartening to see them sticking to their price points because I think it's a fair price for all those bottles. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yes, yeah, but nobody's uh, the only thing they chase is the snowflake, the yeah. once a year thing. Right, right. You got to camp out. I'm not doing. You that. go camp out for that, and I, I don't know what people trade those for, but right. it's a just lot. a lot. A but lot. it can't be that different. No. Than, but I've never had it, so who I knows? Either. Uh, we we have to talk about. <laughs> the Russell's 13. Oh my God. I know. It, it, but you know, and, and I know you like it. I like it too. It's fantastic. I can't get it. And here's why. So Russell's 13 is one of those bottles. So Russell's, we talk about Russell's all the time as an affordable bottle. That's reliably good every single time. And the 13, the retails on it is only what? 70. 70 I think. So, you know, on the higher end of what they do, but also I would say worth the extra money because it is so phenomenal, but good luck getting it. Right. Yep. Um, and that was sort of the first time that Russell's has become one of those unattainable names. Yeah. Um, and I've heard some stories as to why that is. And it, it seems to come back to a botched rollout of the product. Like it wasn't supposed to be, I mean, it was supposed to be exclusive, but it was supposed to be on shelves. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I don't know about you, but I had never even heard of Russell's 13 until it was already sold out. <laughs> um, I, and I, I heard it was coming. Yeah. Um, I just, I really didn't look, I didn't expect to see it. Mm-hmm. And I got super, super lucky yeah. to get the bottle I got. Yeah. Um, I will buy every, if I ever get another, I will buy it without hesitation. Yeah. It's delicious. I, I have heard a few people say, well, you can get a Russell, you can get a single barrel, Russell's reserve single barrel in yeah. the $55 range. The shelf ones, some of the store picks are in the $55, $60 range. Some of those can stretch to 10 or 11 years old. Most of the ones I've ever seen are nine or 10 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so why would you pay the extra? Well, that you know, 13 was something special. It's something special. And I think, yeah. I th- I'm, I'm sure they roll out some nice barrels for single barrel yeah. programs. But when Eddie and Jimmy sit around and go, there's a batch of barrels sitting over yeah. there that we know we've been, we've been sipping on for right. a couple of years now. Right. I, I think they've got something really yeah. tasty in those. It, it did leave a little sour taste in my mouth about not even being able, having the opportunity to try to get one. Mm. And I think that to me is one of the things that's changed over the last 18 months that we've been doing this is I think with the, the, the growth of the bourbon community and people seeking out bottles, exclusivity has become this competition. Yeah. And I don't want to compete, dude. I just well, want to and that, bottles. That's you know? where we started this though. We don't yeah. have to. Right. So, so I knew that bottle was coming. I didn't expect to see it because I could, you could already feel the, yeah. which was unusual because Russell's and wild turkey products don't typically generate that kind of buzz. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just didn't expect to find it. And when I got a chance to buy one at the normal price, I snapped it up. Mm-hmm. That was, that was unusual, but I don't, I don't think that changes the premise. The premise is look, if that gets crazy, we'll yeah. just turn our attention to go drink sure. something else. One thing you and I have learned in the last six months is there is some amazing whiskey coming out of relatively young distilleries. Yeah, for sure. Um, and expanding that category of American single malt. Mm-hmm. We're going to taste later today uh, for a video we're going to put together some Boulder Spirits yeah. produced whiskeys mm-hmm. that I just think are delicious yeah. and they're different. There's yeah. some innovation there. I mean, a bourbon with 44% malted barley as part of its makeup. Mm-hmm. That's different. It's yeah. tasty. So yeah. I think the premise is still valid. We, yeah. and, and lucky for me, um, I think lucky for you, other than that Russell's 13, Wild Turkey products haven't been affected all that much right. by right. that. I mean, sure, maybe maybe a bottle of 101 is now $22 instead of 18 or 19 Right. But it hasn't been affected like that. And that, if that if, strikes me as inflation more than anything else. Yeah, it's know? just that, that could be chalked up to yeah. typical price inflation. But if I'm left with... Just Russell's 
Single barrel bourbons oh, and yeah. rye? Yeah, yeah. No okay. Doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. Well, and, and like you said, I mean, to go into Hazel's at really any time and pick that up for $27 on sale. For the Russell's 10? For the yeah, Russell's absolutely. 10. Absolutely. And the I mean, Russell's six year rye, same kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. I don't mind that at all. No, I don't either. I don't either. And and I think I have recommended Russell's as a bottle to more people this year than any other. Yeah. Um, and, and like you said, I mean, Boulder Spirits. Last year, I think when we did our, our roundups of, you know, most surprising bottle of the year, but I think I, I think I yeah, mentioned that Boulder bottled Spirits. and bond bourbon. One of those for it's sure. Fantastic. Look, when I went by the other day to get these samples, we're going to taste through. And, and if you haven't just a quick little uh, shout out to them, anywhere you can buy Boulder Spirits, they typically sell what they call the adventure pack. Yeah, I like that. It's six <laughs> bottles, uh, 50 milliliters each yeah. of their six expressions, three yeah. bourbons, three American single malts. It's got a little map in it that tells that. you about it. You, it's got a QR code that takes you to a video of Alistair Brogan, I believe is how you pronounce his name, the founder of Boulder Spirits and Vapor Distilling, mm -hmm. talking you through with Ryan Nagley, who works yeah. there at the distillery, talking you through why we did it this yeah, way yeah. and what we think it brings in terms right. of flavor. Jimmy and Eddie Russell don't sit down and do an hour long video right. and walk you through that. It's pretty slick. So if you get a chance, buy that little pack. I think it's about 40 bucks yeah. to buy the pack. And that's, that's also a good point to bring up is a lot of these smaller distilleries are more than willing to talk about their They're product. They're trying hard. Yeah. Deerhammer, when we went to Deerhammer and Lenny, Lenny was a huge wealth of information in that realm. So yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's definitely worth starting to taste some of those smaller distilleries. And we've done that. And I think we've done it with great success this year. Yeah, for um, sure. And I think when I went over there, Ryan just pulled out, you know, we just pulled the bottles out. Yeah. And we started sipping stuff and I'm thinking, how am I going to get home? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I live here now. <laughs> I guess I got to stay home. Uh, but they just, you know, they've, they've got to stretch a little bit. They've yeah. got to try some different things. Yeah. And we talked about this with Lenny even. Um, there's innovation across the industry right now. But if you really want to get outside the box. Yeah. Uh, or outside the barrel, so to yeah. speak. You're going to have to talk to these smaller distilleries. And I, sure. I think it's. Maybe you'll hit a bad one once in a while, but you hit that everywhere. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. perfect. Right. But I, I think you and I have found good experience to say it's worth giving those a shot, especially if you can get a little sample pack like that and yeah. sample through them real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I was up in Oregon and, you know, I, I was in the airport and there was um Westward distillery has the, they're an Oregon distillery mm -hmm. and they have a little kiosk there. And, um, I was late for my flight, so I didn't pick one up, but they had, you know, they had their, their bottles and it was, I think, uh, between two and six years was what they had in the bottle. Um, and I almost grabbed one, but boy, you know, it was a hundred bucks and it's just sort of like right on the cusp of what I would be willing to spend to try one out. But, yep. you know, I, I think in the past, like if you had asked me a year ago, if I would have even considered buying one of those bottles, I probably wouldn't yep. have. Um, but now I'm more willing to spend some money on those smaller distilleries that are doing their own thing because I think we've had such good luck. And I think the, the whole reason we ended up at Deerhammer was because we had kind of had a string of bad luck yeah. in some of those yeah. smaller distilleries. But then Lenny you know, took pity on us. He did. And, and Lenny <laughs> showed us some really good stuff. And I have two bottles now of Deerhammer on the shelf, the American single malt. And, um, and I've been sipping on one and it holds up. It's different. It's delicious. It's different for sure. But yeah. you know, it's, it's fantastic yeah. in its own way. It's got, it's got so much going on. So anyway, and their, and their gin's pretty good too. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, um, that glass sounds kind of suspiciously empty. What can I? What can I pour for you, Mark? We've got so many good bottles right here. We do. Well, first of all, let's let's uh, review. Don't pass up the Dickel fifteen year old. And and I think too, if you're one of those people that doesn't like Dickel because of that Flintstone vitamin thing people talk about. <laughs> uh, a few extra years in the barrel tames that quite a bit. It's still there, no doubt. Oh, yeah, it's got its own thing. Uh, but the extra sweet oak on top of that, mm -hmm. oh, just delicious. And if you don't like it, you can always go in the other direction and get that eight-year. Yeah, and it is yeah. different. I mm -hmm. think, you know, when I first read that Nicole Austin called it a bourbon because it had the characteristics, I thought, oh, good, marketing. Yeah. But it definitely tastes different it than does. than typical Dickel whiskey. Yeah. So I, I get where she was coming from. Yeah. Tastes like a bourbon that somebody, you know, like aggressively walked a bottle of Dickel past, you know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> got opened in a room full of Dickel. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get your opinion on something. I sure. brought that Elijah, Tra Elijah Craig. Whew. Elijah Craig. Elijah That's Elijah a new Elijah. one. Nobody's Elijah heard of. Elijah. Yeah. Elijah Craig, Barrel Proof, batch uh, B521. Okay. We've sipped on this, not this batch before, but we've had other bottles of this. Well, I, I want to get your... Just, just pour a little well, and you got, tell me what you think. I still got a little, I, I did a Dan pour. <laughs> well then hand me that bottle, please. All right, here uh, you start and then yeah. I'll, uh, I'll catch up. Um, while, while you're pouring that, 
I do want to mention, and I wonder how much crossover we have in our audiences here between our podcast, you know, with our three to six listeners and our, <laughs> Hey, 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 we're up to, I mean, we're double digits uh, every, double, okay. every single, there episode. are, there are tens of us, <laughs> tens of tens of dozen of us. Yeah. Um, but we do have a YouTube channel that Mark has populated very well, I must say. Um, but I have some interesting videos on there too. And recently, uh, I went to Kansas and, uh, interviewed, uh, Allison Tetrick. For those of you who are listening, who are not bicycle nerds, you won't know Allison's name, but she's actually a pretty, pretty big deal in the bike world. She's pretty awesome. She's a friend of mine. Um, and so I, I, I opened up her horizons. I expanded her horizons, uh, got her, got her past bullet, which nothing wrong with bullet. No, but the, we, there's a bigger world out there, but we drank a lot of samples. And as we got through all the samples, we just get funnier and funnier. <laughs> and, and I'm sure that's what you thought. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, every time I watch it, I'm like, oh. I, I think Allison's okay. I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to lay it down here. Cause she tried to steal you. She did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm a hot item. <laughs> that's poor form. <laughs> well, I, I'm just saying, you know, and I still edited the video yeah. in a fair and balanced way. <laughs> I'm a hot item, a hot ticket right now. I'm the number one show in town. Yeah. Or she doesn't really know much about whiskey. So I, you seem like a big deal. I, I don't know anything about whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. All right. So I, Mark is sipping on uh, the Elijah, Elijah Craig, Craig B521. And um, I realized something as I, as I wow. sipped that. Yeah. I should have gotten some water. Oh, I have some water. But you but you take a sip and yeah. then we'll figure out if what you think. I, I just finished that Dickel 15 year. I gotta sip some water before I transition harshly to a Heaven Hill product here. Let's see. Okay. So garage you know, garage nose on whiskey is different than <laughs> gas my, my whiskey room. A lot of gasoline. And, <laughs> no, that's it that's not that. There's just it's almost an outdoor setting. It is. It's it's gritty. Yeah. I like it. Um you're also sitting like inches from a bicycle chain, which just got freshly lubed. So I don't know. <laughs> All right. I got this barrel. So what do you care? I'm just curious. What is your take? Am I, am I thinking about this compared to the one we've already had? No, nope, just take a sip. Just take a sip and see yeah. what I like. All right. Ooh, I like the nose. That's a, I always get from heaven Hill, like sugary. Like I think, I think vanilla Sunday. I don't know. It's got that sweetness to it. I took a way bigger sip of that barrel proof whiskey <laughs> mm-hmm. that I meant to, t- to take. All right. I like this one better than the last one we tried. I like it better than the other day when I opened it. Yeah. And I know what you're thinking. There's way too much missing from that bottle to have just been opened. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hate it that much. <laughs> I, well, I was experimenting. Mm. And I'll tell you what I'm getting at. I opened this one. And this is a lower proof one of these and I've ever had at 118 and change. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> these are 12 years old. They're bottled, uh, you know, uncut, unfiltered. I realized I never really like them. Mm. I've had, I don't know, not that many, probably a dozen of these going yeah. back to the old, the last style. Mm-hmm. The first one I got was the old bottle style and 130 something proof. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, well, this just isn't as good to me as it seems to be as to other people, mm-hmm. but I'm, this is my first one. Maybe I don't know. But when I opened this one and thought, eh, yeah, it's kind of bitter. It's not super sweet. It's sweet on the nose. It's not sweet on the tongue. Yeah, I do it, like the nose. It's hot. This is 118 proof. It drinks 130. I just don't think it's that good. I, I disagree. I, so here's, here's my thing. So you would, you would text me when you saw this on the shelf and said, do I want one? And I passed on it. Um, and when we opened the last one, I really liked it when we first opened it. And then you gave me a sample and I drank that a few nights later and I hated it. Um, was that the barrel proof or the 18 you're talking about? No, no, no. This was the barrel proof. Mm. Cause we had the 18, the 18 was really good. Um, but I had the, um, the barrel proof in, and I passed on this one because I didn't like it. Um, the second time around, like I liked it when we opened it, we talked a lot about how bottles change, but this one is interesting. So I like the nose. Nose is wonderful. I like it uh, on the front of the tongue and across the tongue. Um, and I even like the initial part of the finish. But the longer that finish lingers, the more bitter it gets. Yeah. That's where I'm struggling with this. And and the thing is, I realized that I struggle with it every time I open one of these. Mm. 
And what ends up happening is I start playing with water. I start looking for a proof where I enjoy it. I'm halfway through the bottle before I find something close. Yeah. I can't replicate it. And at the end of it, I always end the same with these is going, eh, yeah. I don't know. Have you, have you done a side by side with just the regular 94 proof? No, but I have not bought one of those since B519. Okay. Because same thing. Yeah, I yeah. bought a bunch of those for something. They were, I yeah. guess I, I think I bought three or four of them for 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. And cause the one I had before it was maybe okay. Yeah. And I haven't opened one of these or bought one since I did B519. Yeah. I, I, I like, I like three quarter. I like three and a half quarters of that. I don't know math. Uh, but <laughs> three, <laughs> three and a half, <laughs> three and a half quarters. I like three and a half quarters of this. I, what, what I struggle with, like I said, is just, yeah. it's not even the finish. It's like the lo- the longer the finish lingers, that's where it starts to get bitter. Well, here's my problem is they drink hot. Um, they are bitter to me pretty much across the tongue. Um, I don't think it drinks that hot. It doesn't feel like that now, but it, yeah. it did the other day. Yeah. And it always does to me. Maybe and it's and nice. that finish thing, it, the finish is just not pleasant. Yeah. So here's what I did as a test recently. I proofed this down to 90. And I poured it next to the 18 mm. because I had been thinking one of the reasons I bought that bottle was yeah. I bought 80, that's 85, which I think is too much for that bottle. I've, yeah. Everyone I've ever bought before has been around 60. Sure. But that EC 18 can't get it. It's 150 at retail, it's 200 secondary. If I can buy that and proof it to 90, how close am I to the 18? Right. Pretty darn close. It turns out. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, Cause the 18, I quite liked. I quite liked it. When we opened it, I, my mind was blown. Yeah. I have since gotten to think that, you know, it, it kind of shares some of that. The little it's funk at the end. A little, little bitterish yeah, on the end. Yeah. But um, here's what I'm thinking. It's Heaven, Heaven Hill Whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I love Henry McKenna 10-year-old bottle and bond, it is one of those that is not consistent. Yeah. And so I've never had a bad bottle of the McKenna 10. They've all been good. Yeah. But I've had some that just change your life. They're yeah. so good. But they're inconsistent. Yeah. So I think what I'm getting that is 10 years is where this whiskey belongs. Yeah. 12 years is too long, too long. Um, and it's just not consistent. I think we're to me anyway, with, with heaven Hill products, they shine when you, when you get that blast of vanilla over the tongue, everything else beyond that, like the nose is a bonus as far as I'm concerned with heaven Hill. Um, and as long as the finish isn't is long and not distracting, mm-hmm. as long as you're getting that big blast of vanilla, which I feel like I get in every Heaven Hill product, I'm happy. There's just there's just so much ethanol. There there is. There, there's a flavor Even in the there nose. that just feels it just feels like alcohol. Yeah. So you feel it and it tastes it, mm-hmm. and it's there from the beginning, and it gets more bitter as the finish goes on. That's my problem with these barrel proof things. So I, I don't know that I'm going to buy these anymore. It's funny though, because like I said, I keep coming back to this, like the finish, the finish has sort of a, a story of its own, like right up front. I like it. It's smooth. Mm-hmm. But the longer it sits on the back of my tongue is when it starts to get bitter. Well, I know that won't be a popular opinion because that's a pretty popular bottle. Yeah. And I honestly, I quit buying it because I just yeah. didn't enjoy it, but I didn't really recognize that until yeah. I opened this one. But I tell you, let me ask you this just straight up question. What's your favorite Heaven Hill bourbon? Ooh, uh, ooh, I know what you're gonna say. I mean, the Heaven Hill bottle and bond. Yeah, yeah. it's seven years proof. old. Yeah, hundred proof, seven years old yeah. is delicious. Yeah, and more consistent than mm-hmm. most. Of course, it's not a single barrel like the McKenna is. Right. I've had. I think I've, I have one on the shelf now, and I think I've had maybe six bottles of those. They've all been phenomenal. Yeah, I just think that, I, I think I don't. And I know they do, Heaven Hill does some Parker's Heritage releases mm-hmm. that are much, much older, 20, yeah. in the 20s and 27 year. Yeah. Never had one of those, obviously. I've but heard mixed reviews. I'd like to try one. I hear yeah. mixed things on it too, and I'd yeah. certainly give it a trial, though yeah. I can't really afford them. But I just, I'm just getting to think, in my personal opinion, right. that seven ish years. Yeah. Because I mean, frankly, I like the regular small batch. Right. And those used to have a 12 year age statement. Yeah. Now they say they're eight to 12 years old. Right. You're going to bet they're closer to eight. Right. I like those. Yeah. They have a sweeter flavor to me. Right. I like the seven year <laughs> and there are some of those 10 year barrels yeah. are, but I think the reason that I bet if I went back and looked at uh, the barrels of the McKenna 10 that I thought were okay. Yeah. And the ones that blew my mind. Yeah. The blew my mind ones, I bet you were right at 10. Yeah. 
the ones that were okay were closer to 11 because yeah. they, they do come out a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, not too different because they're bottled in bond too, but well, they're I mean, all within a season. But Look behind me on this wall. I mean, aside from the Scotch and the Eagle Rare, this is my, this is my wall of my favorites, yeah. my favorite bourbons. What's the oldest well, bourbon on there? Yeah. But we, you know, we, seven years. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did a podcast about that. Yeah. If old is better, yeah. why do we seem to love Booker so yeah. much? Yeah. I a, mean, I've got a six to seven year old. Right. Bourbon. I mean, right now on that shelf, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bottles of Booker's, one bottle of Baker's, and the Heaven Hill bottle and bond. Aside from the, the Eagle Rares and the Log of Woolen, which is our special cases. Um, those are, and the reason those are up there is because they're, they're the right height. <laughs> 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 I'm so precious. Um, but no, I think, I think that seven, six, seven year, um, age is, is really a sweet spot for a lot of bourbons. Yeah. Well, we drifted off a bit, but I yeah. do think it's tied together. That, yeah. Look, if, if, uh, if age is a part of the pricing component and a part of what whiskey geeks go after, mm-hmm. that means we're leaving some six and seven and eight year old bourbons on a shelf that yeah. are delicious. And of course, our, one of our favorite Swall Turkey 101 is always a mix up of six and seven yeah. and eight year old whiskeys. God, this bottle is messing with my head. Seriously. Like every time I sip it, I'm like, this is great. And then by the end of it, I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> see, that's what I've done the whole time. Yeah. And for years I just kept doing that and buying more of them. And then yeah. at some point I went, you know what? Yeah. Eh. I'm Which is funny because I like the, the the standard ninety four proof. But Elijah isn't it Craig? interesting it's that great. you can because it's 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 the same. It's seventy eight corn, yeah, uh, seventy eight corn, twelve rye, ten malted barley, yeah, and that's the same for McKenna, the Heaven Hill bottled and bond, mm-hmm. um, the Elijah Craig products, right. same mash bill. So it's not a recipe thing. It's it's an aging thing. Well, it's an aging thing. It's it's the you know barrels can be different. Is right. it a single barrel versus a small batch? Yeah, yeah. Is it is it a bottled and bond where it all comes from one season? Right. You right. know, I mean, there's there's a lot of factors in there, but I do think that over the years, on one hand, I want to say Heaven Hill whiskey is very consistent. There's just mm-hmm. not a lot that you hate. Right. But on the other hand, there's just a lot of variance between, and yeah, single barrels are going to vary, mm-hmm. but I've, I mean, the, the bandwidth or the range of how good or bad a Russell's or a single barrel bourbon is, yeah. they're all really good. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. never <laughs> sipped one of those and went, eh, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. But I've definitely opened up a McKenna tenure and went, eh, it's yeah. all right. It's yeah. not bad. It's pretty good. I mean, and that's part of the adventure, right? Like, you know, for, sure. for me, Russell's is something I'm always going to buy. Heaven Hill is always something I'm going to try. If that makes sense. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like the, the, those subtleties, those differences can be fun. Um, so to get that bottle at $80 or $60, $70, whatever the the barrel proof or the single barrel, mm-hmm. that's kind of the fun of it. Am I going to like this? Yeah. You know? Well, I got to say, this is much better in the garage mm-hmm. than it was at the house when I opened it and, and when I proofed it down. Well, I wonder if some of that too is just the bottle's been open. Could be, you know. yeah. Get a little arrogant, but it does. It, but, but you're right. I mean, it does have that that that's sharpness. That, at the but end. that's the problem I have is yeah. is that I open these bottles and they're just they're just messing with my head yeah. the whole time. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I don't really like that. Yeah. I put some water in it. Nah, it doesn't feel. It's just back and forth the whole bottle, and that yeah. that's I don't enjoy that. So I'm just not buying any. You can of them. you can donate this to me. It's okay if you hate I it. I have some experimentation <laughs> to do with that. I am going to sit down and proof those down. Uh huh. Because mm-hmm. I always on those, I always chase the proof, and somewhere around a hundred to one hundred and ten proof is where I end up happy on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and again, let's 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 remind folks: the purpose of barrel proof uncut whiskey is not to see who can drink some stuff that burns their head off. It's so that you get to decide. Yeah, where yeah. you proof that. That's what Booker No did. Right, the Godfather, the man that invented small batch barrel proof uncut bourbon mm-hmm. in, a, in a mass sense. Yeah. He, he watered his, he put ice in his, you drink the whiskey, however you want. Mm-hmm. If that's right out of the glass, the barrel, the bottle neat, mm-hmm. then you drink it neat. Yeah. But that's not the purpose. The purpose is so you can find how you like it. Yeah. And then that changes over time. I might, yeah. sometimes I might drink my Booker's neat and sometimes yeah. I might put a little water in it. Mark, I have a question for you. Okay. So going back to our original question about what's happened in the last 18 months and are there still those practical bottles you can buy? Has your perception of what a reasonable price is for a bottle changed? Yes. Yeah. I don't know that it's, I, I think it's always ratcheted up. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you get blind to things. Yeah. Uh, Melissa and I, my wife and I were talking the other day that uh, when I first saw a bottle of Lafroy 25 mm-hmm. and realized that was a thing years and years ago, right. it was $425. Yeah. And I thought, can you imagine? Now I still to this day not paid. Four hundred twenty-five dollars right. <laughs> above, but I've paid over three hundred for one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 
the other day I saw, well, I went to pick up some more of these Dickel 15 year olds at a place in uh, Longmont Wyatt's, mm -hmm. their little case of special stuff's at the front of the store. So yeah. while I was waiting, I turned around and looked, they had the 25, a 30. Yeah. And, like, the 25 is now almost $800 a bottle. Right. Right. In six or seven years. Yeah. It's like buying Apple stock 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So, so over time, I think there's, there's an inflation built into my head or, mm -hmm. or, uh, I don't know, you get used to it. Yeah. It normalizes. Yeah. But I do think in the last few months it's, it's ratcheted up, but I do, I want to, I want to defend myself a bit and say that what used to be a no brainer at 30 or 40, I'll do that at 60 or 70 now, mm -hmm. but it's really good whiskey yeah. at 60 or 70 bucks. You right. know, you're in that, you're in that, uh, Russell's reserve single mm -hmm. barrel range. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just, there's, you know, you used to could buy bookers there. You can't anymore, but there's still Eagle rare in that, right, in that right. range. I'm still finding Eagle rare at 30 or 35. Yep, yep. So I, I do think that my, my, I don't think about it. It's good whiskey. I'll buy it. Price has gone up more lately just because of the craziness. You know, when bookers is a hundred bucks, well yeah. then bakers at 60 seems like a hell of a deal. Right. I do think it's changed some. And that's, that's my point. I mean, especially with this Elijah Craig bottle, right? You know, what'd you pay for this one is $85. 85. So that's, that's that hurt. That does. It does hurt. But also we've, in my mind anyway, you know, if I saw that on a shelf and I saw it for 75, I'd probably take a leap, you know, and that's sort of my adjustment of what I want to spend on bottles now. Um, but by the same token, if a friend who is not into whiskey asks me, what bottle should I go get? I'm going to say Russell's tenure, or I'm going to say wild Turkey 101 start yeah. there. So, you know, to me, the, the, the progression, the ladder is still there. My personal, I'm going to say something gross, my personal whiskey journey. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to edit, edit that, that out. out, please, yeah. for God's sakes. Um, I've, I'm, I'd rather people think you, you uttered something truly profane right, yeah, than I'm, you said whiskey journey. Yeah. I'm too, I'm too Dan <laughs> pours in. That's the problem. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I think my price range has gone up. And my wife said to me the other day, my, my wife, Rachel says to me, she goes, you know, it'd be great if we just had like one good, nice bottle of bourbon and one nice bottle of scotch on the shelf. And that was it. So naturally I divorced her and moved out. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but you know, for me, <laughs> she's gonna hurt. she's gonna kill me. She never she doesn't listen to our podcast. Thank God. Um, <laughs> she doesn't listen to us in general. So yeah, it's a fair point and good for her. Um, but my I think my personal price point has gone up, and I think that's largely just because I've sort of figured out what I like. Mm -hmm. And then when I want to take a leap, I'm like, okay, I'll spend $40 on, yeah. the, on the leap. And I think that's the practical part of what we do. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. It's that you found a value proposition that makes sense. Yeah. And that those value propositions still exist yeah. as crazy as things have gotten. And, and I would say it's better to spend, you know, 70 bucks on a bottle I know I'm going to love than $38 on a bottle yeah. I probably, or I, I may hate. Well, I told you, um, it's been, it's been a month now. I decided and said out loud in front of Melissa. I'm not buying any more regular whiskey so until lied. I drank all the regular you whiskey. You lied to your wife. Okay. I did on. not. <laughs> I did. I haven't done it yet. Okay. And it's kind of hurts me because I don't, there's some, there's some $40 bottles of rye whiskey. I don't really want to open, Yeah. but I'm out of wild Turkey 101 rye. Yeah. I'm not going to buy any more regular whiskey. Yeah. I'm opening those bottles. Yeah. And I just think that we ought to be spending the money on the stuff that's truly enjoyable, yeah. not the stuff that's okay. You know what we should do for a podcast episode? What's that? Is is pick a brand that we haven't really given enough attention to. And I, to me, the one that comes to mind is Four Roses. Every Four Roses bottle I've ever had delicious. has been great. Yeah. I know I different. Know, I know nothing about it. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll have a Four Roses episode or, yeah. or a trilogy of, or, or what do you, quadruply? A, I have a four. A for, quadrilogy? You can have three of something about Four Roses. <laughs> a quadrilogy. A quadrilogy. I don't, that's, um, I don't know math. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a word though. I thought you'd know the word. I don't know. Uh, All right, we'll do that. Yeah. And I tell you, I'm, I'm going to brag on my wife because, uh, these, uh, old Forrester barrel proof store picks that we picked up mm -hmm. the other day. Yeah. Um, they sold out in a day, Yeah, 160 bucks in a day. And when I went to pick the one up that I got online and there were still some, and I texted you, there were actually two left Yeah, and I carried them both around for a bit. And then I thought, nah, I'm just going to buy the one. Yeah. When I got home and told Melissa there was another one there, and she goes, "You didn't buy it? Why didn't you buy it? I would think you'd buy it." <laughs> well, I was trying to be logical and thoughtful, and stop oh, doing that. I can't. I can't believe you didn't buy that. <laughs> she understands you. She does. She's 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 good to you. 
<laughs> she's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. And she likes uh, expensive peated Isla produced scotch. Like like that one right like there? Like Lagavulin. Lagavulin. She 16? loves Lagavulin. She loves Lefroig. Yeah. My wife was sipping on that last night. I saw that for I nine- thought she didn't like peated whiskey. She doesn't, but she loves that. And, oh. and I saw that on the shelf in Oregon for 93 bucks. Oh, so close. You know, I've never paid more than... I don't think I've ever paid more than seventy dollars for that. That that breaks my heart. I did yeah. pay. I only paid eighty for that. I have a. I have four or five, three or somewhere between three and five at the Lagavulin eights that yeah. I paid thirty five bucks for. Oh right. well, I'll give you thirty six. That, that was years ago. I'll give you thirty six for them. How about I'll, I'll open them <laughs> and you can have what you want. I like that even better. <laughs> All right, this has been fun. So I think the the key thing that we're talking about is that there's still practical purchases out there. You do not, absolutely, do not have to pay a hundred bucks for some really good bottles and you could pay a lot of money for stuff that if you really stop and thought about it. And I have to tell you, I'm curious about those old Forrester store picks. Those are like four or five years old. They're not going to be very old. They right. won't tell you what they are. And we paid 80 bucks for them. Yeah. I hope we don't regret that as good as the old Forrester 1920 is for 65 yeah. bucks. I love that bottle. Uh, but there is still good whiskey out there. You do not have to pay a bunch of money. You, you should not chase whiskey around unless that's if that's just your thing and you're never going to open it, whatever. But we're about opening and tasting and sharing the whiskey. There's still really good stuff out there. Um, Dan mentioned the YouTube channel. Check that out. We're gonna, we've been doing, we do a lot of open the bottle, back to the bottle, you know, quick takes on whiskey. But we're also getting into things like interviews with cyclists. We're yeah. going to do some fun stuff like uh, what I'm looking at right now here in a minute. We're going to. Crack open a George T. Stag from 2020 <laughs> and a Stag Junior, similar proof, vastly different in age. Yes. Are they any different in taste? We'll find out. We'll find out momentarily. But anyway, check the YouTube channel out for that. You can find everything at thepracticalstill.com. Um, look us up on uh, the socials too at the Practical Still or Brown Tie Dan or Uphill Still or wherever you find us. And if you have questions, let us know. We'd love to uh, talk about what people want us to talk about. Otherwise, we just make this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Which no, may or may not be entertaining it. to our tens of <laughs> tens of listeners. Yeah. Anything else, Dan? No, I think we I think we nailed it. I uh, I got to stop doing Dan pours, or else we're not going to be able to do the stag versus well, stag junior. I have to be a little more careful because yeah. I have to go home. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, I think I think if you guys would check out the Practical Still uh, YouTube page. Mark is the smart guy here when it comes to bourbon. Uh, definitely check out the YouTube page where he does really phenomenal work. Uh, and I, I just tell jokes and, and I'm kind of an idiot. So like, it's a good foil, right? It's like, funny how we both think that's what we do, <laughs> <laughs> but we have fun. Yeah, we do. And that's important. And whiskey should be fun. Yep. If you're not having fun, then get rid of the whiskey. Absolutely. And uh, go find something else to do. Yep. And drink some Dickel. It's delicious. Absolutely. At 15. There you go. Do it. All right, man. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers.